Well, good morning, everyone. In this video, we're just going to cover some of the highlights of the upcoming forecast here and talk about some of the changes we're expecting to see between now and that second week of February. So we've been locked into some pretty cold air. This is a look at the average temperature ranks by climate district from January 11th to the 21st. And some of that colder air is what's really important this morning. See it locked in here? That's setting up this overrunning event. These cold morning temperatures near the surface are being overrun on the top by a big high pressure cell that's sitting just off the Carolina coast pumping in that heat and moisture above and as a result we're sandwiching that cold air right next to the surface with a large melting layer above it and that's why we've got an extended area in through here of a winter storm uh, watches or excuse me winter storm advisories with an ice storm warning here in parts of Missouri Arkansas and winter storm warning in parts of Oklahoma and outside of that, the West has several weak fronts coming in. The first one today has got a winter storm warning out for parts of the Sierra Nevada, but we're seeing flood watches extend through both Northern and Southern California as well. So as we just kind of look at the setup for this pattern, let's take a look at that ice threat first. Throughout the day today, we're going to watch the ice threat be diminished from the south to the north as the warmer air tries to arrive. But for some folks, it may not arrive until later today. So this whole region in through here has a really high probability of grabbing at least a tenth of an inch of ice. Now this ice storm is nothing, honestly, compared to what was endured in parts of the Pacific Northwest last week. But that's not to compare weather systems. It's just to show you that some places out there picked up well more than a half inch of ice. We're looking at a good coating in through here, but not the devastating effects I showed you last week in the Northwest. Getting right into the models, here's the idea. Remember, this shading in through here, this color uh, representation means ice. So as we watch this storm system evolve, you'll see the green pushing in behind it. That's the warmer air by tonight pushing in, kind of getting rid of the ice threat late. But what you'll notice is as we just rock back and forth on the northern edge of this, where that snowpack is sitting, we're going to keep the coldest air near the surface. And we also run the risk of seeing this convert over to snow in parts of northern Missouri, getting into southern and central Iowa, eventually moving into eastern Iowa, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Now that's just pulse number one. Number two follows it tomorrow afternoon and evening and it spreads right over the same area but with more mild air in place we don't see the risk of ice extending into Tuesday in the same manner and location that it is today. The other thing to take note of is watch the frontal boundaries coming into the west today. You're going to get a little bit of a break on Tuesday and then another system comes in on Wednesday. See the frontal boundary here. So we've got two fronts just in the beginning of this week. Decent rains coming even into Arizona. Pretty excited to see this pattern evolve over the next couple of weeks. And one of the big things I think about is what is it doing for this upcoming spring and summer? Because this is what our current snow water equivalent map looks like. And for the last week, I've been talking about what happens to this snow, especially east of the Rockies, as it melts. Now, western U.S. snowpack is looking okay. It's nowhere near where we were a year ago, but it's not. It's okay. We're going to take a look at that later this week in more detail. But I'll be watching to see how the root zone soil moisture map changes. Because I want to see, as the mild air comes in, what happens with this, uh, you know, with, with the moisture getting soaked in here. Now, if you want to, go watch the extended video, because at this point in that video, I stop and I ask a question. And the question is, how El Nino-like has winter been so far? Because at the end of that video, I get into the long range, which we'll cover briefly here in this video. But I think the thing I'll be watching all week will be this Pacific Jet Extension. By the time we get into next weekend, as it extends, it breaks up right here across North America. Now, it did this exact same thing in December, right? Remember how mild December was? We're going to do that. All the cold air is going to go to Alaska or Greenland. And the question we have is, do we get a repeat of early January at some point in February? So if you notice, through Groundhog's Day, no. We're going to have a lot of mild air in place for the next 15 days. Maybe the jet extends and gets Southern California finally. We maybe stay wet across the south, but there's a whole lot of nothing, just warmth in the midsection of the country. But as we get out here to the 4th and 5th, I start to see the transition. What is it? You just get the jet retracting. It starts to come back out of the southwest, which means after the second, third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in that front time frame, we start to open this back up to an entirely different regime. Because the reality is over the next five days, the cold air goes to Alaska, Greenland. Very mild here. This is what day five through ten looks like. Very mild compared to average across Canadian prairie, most of the United States, and even day 10 through 15. Watch these two areas for the displacement of cold air first. That will be our clue that the pattern is going to change. So what do we have this week? Well, high pressure sits here. 
We're just going to watch all week as multiple pulses of moisture come through this area and eventually by the end of the week reach the southeast. If you are sitting in this area, we are left out of the flow. So frontal boundaries try to come into the west, they deliver some moisture, but no lee troughing out of this. Nothing coming over the Rockies to kick off a system here. We're going to have to wait probably until we get pretty good into the month of February before that starts to change. So if we look at precip totals for the next seven days, just to make a point here, very heavy along the coast, very heavy in the south and southeast. That's the European model forecast. Here's the GFS, so European and GFS. And then if we want to look at some snow, this is not a big setup for snow in the west. And we're going to maybe get a little bit of snow in through this area here, but that all depends on the low level temperature profile. So what I'm most concerned about is that drier area. What you notice here is that through the next 10 days, there's a 90 to 100 percent chance that they don't even see a tenth of an inch of total precip. On the flip side of that, who's really, really wet? Oops, we just got a new model run in here. Who's going to be really wet over the next 10 days? Well, that's the probability of, t of, of an inch. Here's the chance of two inches. And here's the chance of four. That's a lot of moisture coming into the south and into the Pacific Northwest. Finally, where does this go by that time we get out there at about the third, fourth, fifth, sixth? Look at the deep troughs coming in the west. Look at the ridging event that's setting up ahead of it. If this moves here, this will set up the least side of the Rockies to kick off multiple systems once we get out there past the fourth and fifth. I think that's the current time frame. So what do we have until then? Well, we have wet west, dry east. All three models are suggesting that. On the temperature side of this, we're starting to see the frost line move back north. It's already out of the west, so it's going to start to move back north. And here's today's highs, but watch this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 50s and 60s here, 70s down south. That's Friday, getting into Saturday and Sunday, and that's why I'm worried about the snow melt. And the GFS looks just like the Long Range European. Here's the Long Range European, day 5 through 10 and day 10 through 15. Now beyond this, it's going to be about the way that the MJO transitions. Does it collapse back into null? Or does it sweep over here into the colder phases as to what February is going to look like? If the European wins out, it's going to be a return to active weather. The central United States keeps California wet, the south wet. And even when you look in here, you go, wait a minute, is that really going to be dry? No, we're going to have systems rolling through there. The GFS is way different. It has the uh, MJO signal collapsing. So that'll be the thing we're going to have to think about. Now, I just kind of want to entice you to go look at the longer range video because we talk about El Nino, how quickly it dies and La Nina comes back in compared to NOAA, the CFSV2 model, and the European being the slowest of that. We then look at all the long range models. This is February, March, and April, March, April, May, May, June, July, and look at the potential risk of this area being our first drier signal of spring. OK, because it shows up not only there, but it shows up in spring and early summer in our models that come out of the Climate Prediction Center. We're going to watch that very, very carefully. I also spent some time looking at my analog years. Now, you can pause it and have a close look or just watch the end of the video where I dig into that. And then where we finish is with South America. Now, the pattern in South America is going to go over drier here, but it is also cooler for the next 10 days, which means the drier signal that you're about to see in Argentina and southern Brazil, not a problem. That's like a cool summer, not worried about this. The wet weather north is the top concern. How long does this stay wet? Because right now, some of the models through most of February keep a quarter in through here wetter than average. And what I'll be concerned about is any delays in harvest and therefore the planting of safrina crops. Because as you know, I'm worried about April and May rains being less than adequate for that safrina crop right now. That's all in the northern growing area. So we'll keep an eye on it. I'll report back to you again uh, tomorrow morning. In the meantime, you watch Alaska and Greenland. That's the key for the change in pattern for North America. Thanks.